This is a brief video explaining the decision model to evaluate alcohol education interventions. So the decision here is whether to introduce alcohol education on campus or not. And the chance of success is given by this bar here, which can be moved. So for instance, you can see that I'm moving this and the value of the intervention is changing. As I increase the chance of success, the value goes up, and as I reduce it, the value goes down. This can be very useful to find out at what point the decision just changes. So for instance, as I go from 11% chance of success to 12%, the intervention is a, it becomes a good idea as the value goes above zero. So what this tells me is I need to believe that there's at least a 12% chance of success for me to say yes. To this education program. Now of course this depends on a whole bunch of other things and one of the first things that we notice here is these two boxes which are assessments of the uncertainty minor injury distribution and the major injury. What this says is if the program is a success then this is the distribution we're likely to see with a 25% chance of there being around 100 injuries a 50% chance of there being about 56 minor injuries and a 25% chance of there being 37 minor injuries. A minor injury is defined as anything that requires a 911 assistance uh, call and um, a, a trip to the ER, but nothing life-threatening. So that's the distribution of minor injuries given success. Given failure, you'll notice that these numbers are a little higher, which says that that's the impact that this program has had. It's dropped these numbers a little bit. Major injuries uh, are those which are traumatic or sometimes fatal. And the belief of the decision maker in this example is that a major injury will occur once in 10 years if we do not adopt the program. And if we do, then we believe the major injury is spread out to once in 30 years. Now, someone might uh, object to this, saying that we, if we try to keep our minor injuries down, then uh, that's not a good thing because high minor injuries means there's, a less of, there's less of a chance that we'll see a big major injury anytime soon. Uh, but if we have low minor injuries, that might mean that some minor injuries are not being caught are not being treated and so they might escalate to become a major injury. So this line of logic can be easily modeled by modeling relevance between the minor and the major injuries. So if I check this box off, uh, what this says is they're no longer irrelevant. In other words, they're relevant. And so if we see high minor injuries given success, then we believe that a major injury occurs once in 30 years. But if the minor injury number drops to 56, the medium level, then we have a, have a uh, higher chance of seeing a major injury or put another way, we'll see it sooner, 25 years. And at the low degree, we'll see it even sooner, 20 years. Similarly, we see this distribution of 10, 8, and 6 years. Now, there's another element, and that's the cost and the disvalue associated with uh, this decision. And so this table here shows all the important cost figures. So you have cost of the intervention, which is the code of the vendor saying, we want to um, basically provide this kind of a service uh, for this price tag. Now the staff time cost is the factoring in of the, the alcohol uh, safety director and the residential dean's time and then there's the 911 cost of two deputies and three firefighters for one hour. Then there's the ER cost. And then we get to the education disvalue. Just to remind ourselves, the education disvalue is coming from the classes missed due to minor and major injuries. And so that's what we're talking about here. And so here for minor, we've taken it at $200 cost of tuition for one class at Stanford. Uh, the trauma cost is set at $45,000 is the average treatment cost of a head injury at Stanford Hospital. Uh, the legal liability of Stanford is capped at $2 million because beyond that Stanford is insured. 
Uh, and this is kind of inspired from the fact that MIT incurred $8 million uh, due to uh, an alcohol-related injury on campus. Uh, the trauma disk value is assumed to be zero for now, but we can change it and see how the model changes. And the education disk value is taken to be $45,000, same as the trauma cost for now, uh, for no better reason than this is a pretty major outcome in a person's life to you know, either die or be disabled. And since we value that education, we want to put some dollar amount here saying we, we don't want this happening to people. And so when we change this, uh, impress evaluate, these numbers will change. So for let's try this. Let's make this $10,000, a trauma disk value. This is the money that Stanford's willing to pay over and above their financial liabilities. When we evaluate, we see that the value of the intervention went up. Now there's another way of checking this, uh, and that's through the appraisal, which we'll cover in a separate video. Thank you for watching.